Our customers, enterprises, are adopting cloud at an alarming rate, and it just keeps accelerating. And so our strategy here at Blue Cat has been to provide the best possible solutions for the hybrid cloud. Uh, we talk over and over and over again about the four key challenges, this complete lack of visibility into DNS, the lack of control over IP space and DNS records that might be deployed in the cloud, um, inability to automate and orchestrate rapid change, and that's what the cloud's really about. Change, change, change. This stuff is constantly changing. Um, and, and then all of this brings about all these complex DNS forwarding rules. And, and so uh, we, we, have, we have solutions purpose-built to attack these challenges. As our customers push more and more into cloud and start adopting um, the cloud platform's DNS solutions, some other pain points are coming out that fit right into these four challenges. Um, and these are, we've had scores of conversations with customers who keep bringing up the same issues as they adopt private DNS. Um, they're, they're creating the before state. They're recreating what their world was when they were Microsoft DNS users by just completely disaggregating and really sort of blowing up the central control DNS that they've uh, become accustomed to with BlueCat. And so Cloud Resolver, we're gonna talk about today, really is geared to solve those issues, be part of the BlueCat suite. So let's start at the end. Cloud Resolver is easy to deploy. It's truly cloud native and cloud aware. And by that, I mean, it knows where it's running. It knows if it's running in AWS or Azure or GCP, and it can discover and resolve in real time. Uh, we can discover any zones. We can configure appropriate resolution paths. We can resolve across uh, multiple clouds. We can resolve across uh, segmented networks within one cloud. We can deal with things like private endpoints, and we'll get into a bit of that. But the point is, we've made a solution that, that looks, smells, and feels like cloud to help solve the problem of cloud DNS and bring everything back together. So to really explain this, let's start with the basics. So in the before state, before BlueCat, when we go in and customers still using Microsoft or some other silo-based approach for DNS, they tend to have many different DNS servers out there and these different DNS servers might be authoritative for different domains, especially if there's like a complicated AD environment or multiple forests or the stuff's being managed completely separately. So you might have one DNS server that's authoritative for a bunch of domains such as uh, bluecat.corp or bluecat.lab or some internal version of bluecat.com. You might have a completely different DNS uh, server that's um, responsible for um, a different set of domains. Maybe, um, you know, bluecatemea.com and so on. And a third server that might be responsible for a whole nother series of domains. In fact, um, you know, some of our customers have, uh, or the pre in the pre-state might have hundreds of different servers out there many of them responsible for different domains. There's mechanisms in DNS to try to connect these different domains. Um, some of them are more fault tolerant than others, but by and large, our customers end up creating things like conditional forwarding rules, because if I'm now a client over here and I'm configured to primarily go to these DNS servers, these DNS servers have no idea where bluecatemea.com is. There is no connection. They're managed completely separately. So things like conditional forwarding rules need to be written here that say, if somebody's gonna go query bluecatemea.com, this server needs to go get the answer from this server. These conditional forwarding rules basically um, are a band-aid because there is no root zone. There is no sort of, um, uh, primary directory of everything. This causes major problems. And in fact, you know, uh, when we did an audit of some customers in a, in a like prospect stage, we saw cases where there were thousands and thousands and thousands of different conditional forwarding rules. So imagine if 
a new domain was added over here and the conditional forwarding rule was added correctly over here, but somebody forgot to run it over here, uh, or create that same rule over there, you end up creating these weird like zone blind spots in DNS. Um, or if this server moved an IP address and this conditional forwarding rule no longer worked, there's just all sorts of areas of breakages here because there isn't, this isn't a single distributed directory like the internet, like the public DNS. This is a set of directories that are band-aided together, basically. There's absolutely no central control. And that's what creates this like massively unhappy administrator or set of administrators. Um, at one of our customers, um, you know, it took a month for a change to propagate through all of these different servers. Post BlueCat, it took only a minute. And, and it's that sort of change that we bring with BlueCat because now when we go in and we implement BlueCat integrity, we now very importantly have centralized control and where we're still not replicating the way the public DNS works or the internet works, um, we ensure through the configuration in BlueCat that there's seamless connectivity between the different servers and the right domains can be looked up from the right locations and answers um, uh, you know, reliably be delivered. So with the central control, we now have via API, via UI, um, a singular place to make these changes and create this sort of harmony in DNS lookup across the organization, uh, which makes this little guy happy. So we were in this wonderful position where our goals and the customer's goals were 100% aligned. They wanted to get rid of all of these DNS silos and they wanted to replace them with BlueCat. Every time they found a new silo somewhere, they wanted to get rid of that silo and replace it with BlueCat. We succeed when our customers succeed. As they push out BlueCat, as they remove everything else that's there, the value to BlueCat is higher, the satisfaction of the customer is higher. It's this shared value between us and them. Same goal, it's been wonderful. And every time there was M&A or you know, some Windows servers were found over there that nobody knew about, um, great for BlueCat. Get rid of those servers, buy more BlueCat and continue driving value and centralized control. So we lived in this perfect harmony where um, customers were creating this wonderful central control plane with integrity and deploying many, many, many BDDSs to control DNS across the entire environment. And then this started happening. Our customers went from poking around in the cloud to really starting to drive um, you know, pretty sophisticated, mature cloud um, migration strategies. We heard all sorts of things like, you know, 80% of data centers into cloud in by, you know, in two years and all of these objectives and goals. Um, ultimately, they're trying to push all the stuff in the cloud like we we're talking about before so that we can change this stuff faster to meet their digitization strategies. This stuff is really happening. We're not walking back from that. And now, if customers are pushing stuff into cloud and they're taking advantage of the cloud uh, platform service DNS, so this would be things like Route 53 or Azure Private DNS. Or Google's, you know, cloud DNS. Uh, if they start taking advantage of this authority, well, we end up running into the before state. Customers have to actually do things like add conditional forwarders to integrity to for specific domains or specific zones to start going to different clouds. And that can get ugly pretty quickly. One, because they're not doing what, you know, they're not gaining the value of the platform for those clouds. Two, they don't really control the DNS in those clouds. They don't even know what's going on there. They're just being asked to add this rule or that rule. Things change on the cloud quickly and they're not sure about it. We released this great product, um, Cloud Discovery and Visibility, so that we can discover what's going on in the cloud, both from a DNS perspective and from an IPAM and network perspective, and start bringing that stuff back to integrity so we can see it there. 
we have customers that are pushing uh, BDDSs up into the cloud, for instance, and let's try to get the cloud teams to use integrity for all of DNS, but there's problems with that. It's great to have a BDDS up in the cloud. I can mirror any of my on-prem zones there to reduce latency, create survivability, which are critical for the cloud. So anything that's on-prem is now available in the cloud. Fantastic, and it's a great use case for integrity there. Um, I can deploy a BDDS in cloud because I am serving the answers to, let's say, a remote office. So I might have um, uh, you know, a remote office, and that remote office might be configured to go to the cloud to get DNS services, and there's integrity. So I'm just basically using the cloud as a data center for things that aren't in the cloud. But when it comes to the DNS required in the cloud itself, it's more complicated. And it's more complicated because each of these clouds isn't just, don't think of it like a single segmented data center. Each of these clouds end up being many, many um, uh, things. Um, there's multiple regions. So our customers might deploy um, in, you know, 10 different Amazon regions. Amazon has regions in places like, um, you know, the US, there's a couple. In, in EU, there's many. In Asia, there's many. So there might be many, many regions. Within each of these regions, there might be many tenants. Um, and different clouds call these things different things. So I'm just going to call them accounts for here. So basically, di different, um, uh, yeah, different tenants, I think is the right word. Um, each account might have multiple networks. Uh, they call the networks different things. I'm gonna call them virtual private networks. Um, sorry, I'm gonna call them virtual private clouds. You end up, and, and by the way, each virtual private cloud can have many uh, zones, so many different DNS zones. This adds up in many cases to many, many, many things. I've got 10 regions. Um, some of our customers have 100 accounts per region. Each account could have, I don't know, let's say another 10 VPCs. Each VPC might have uh, several DNS zones. I mean, it could have 50, 100, whatever the case. You know, do the math here and you end up with um, a large permutation of different places to look for DNS. You're not going to write all of these conditional forwarding rules. In fact, there might not even be connectivity to all of these different networks. There's many, many networks, de depending on how the customer's configured, they might be able to access them or might not be able to access them. It's very difficult for our customers and they're struggling mightily right now to figure out the best way to connect integrity to the cloud because of all of this complexity. So to bring this back up, our customers are adopting cloud. When they're adopting cloud, they're starting to use private DNS on the different cloud providers. They're adopting multiple clouds. The private DNS capabilities on these different clouds are different. This creates a lot of complexity. The complexity ends up being in around three different areas. One, there's distributed authority of DNS zones. So within each VPC, and customers might have three, they might have 100, which might be in different accounts, in different regions, there's different ownership of different zones. So this nature of having a distributed, highly distributed authority of DNS makes it very difficult to figure out how to resolve any specific record. Secondly, in many cases, they're gonna end up using the same zone names. And if I use the same zone names, it becomes even more difficult to figure out where to resolve any specific record. And one of the reasons that there might be same zone names is the third point, which are private endpoints. Private endpoints are the cloud's mechanisms of providing cloud services on the private IP addresses deployed in these VPCs. That way, when I'm consuming, for instance, a database as a service on any of the clouds, 
I'm not egressing out to a public endpoint to get there. I can get to it directly from my private network and the clouds provide that IP on one of my IP addresses. Those utilize a very special type of DNS that can only be resolved from in one of the VPCs. These three problem areas, again, create the complexity that causes our customers to deploy their own bespoke type solutions that are somewhat janky in nature to try to sort for this. And since the numbers can be so great, given the number of VPCs and accounts and regions, we can't really utilize our capabilities in edge namespaces because we're limited to 10 and any more wouldn't be particularly manageable. So for instance, a customer might manage blue.com in this VPC and cat.com in this VPC and dog.com in this VPC. And that's one zone, but there could be tens or hundreds. It, it's completely up to customer. Each of those is available at a different resolution point. And again, just given the raw numbers here, it would be pretty difficult to keep and continually manage uh, which of these authorities or which of these resolvers is appropriate for each of these different zones. Uh, furthermore, a customer might decide that they're going to deploy blue.com and VPC2 as well for a variety of different very valid reasons. And now you get into a, a situation where you can't necessarily predict um, from a sort of a um, RFC-based DNS server where any answer to any record in uh, blue.com would be. Um, and then, as we mentioned before, some of these VPCs might be using private endpoints, like for instance, uh, there might be a database as a service that's exposed in this specific VPC. And if that's the case, given the type of cloud it is, there's different, very unique and special solutions for how the DNS for this specific database is going to be represented. Um, you know, multiply this times 100 or 1,000, and that's the complexity our customers are dealing with. These zones can come, they can go as stuff gets deployed, and then come back when it gets deployed again. And we can't have something that we're just constantly reconfiguring based on everything that's out there. Um, this is a consistent set of, of change. You know, change is, is, is going to continuously happen here. Um, adding to the complexity. So the BlueCat Cloud Resolver can be deployed anywhere in any of those VPCs in that region. Normally it might be done in a shared services VPC. And this Cloud Resolver will go in real time, figure out what the map is of all of these zones, figure out um, how to resolve any of those specific record sets. It will um, understand and, and immediately generate strategies for same zone. So where am I going to go resolve blue.com based on where the query might be coming from and make all of those records available. Um, and also has unique strategies to deal with private endpoints, abstracting our customers from the complexities of each cloud and just making them resolvable um, regardless of cloud. The cloud resolver itself is accessed via Edge, a singular namespace in Edge that can call the Cloud Resolver from no matter where um, Edge is deployed. And the Cloud Resolver will be able to basically act as a abstraction layer for anything in that region to deal with these different levels of complexity to create a seamless experience for resolving anything on the cloud for the customer. Now, the Edge service point might be connecting the data center or the branch or the enterprise to the cloud. Or the edge service point might be connecting different uh, networks within the cloud to the cloud resolver. Either way works. Anything that needs DNS running on that cloud can access the cloud resolver through an edge service point in order to get resolution to anything on that cloud. This connects the data center and the branch to the cloud, optimizes the cloud, and provides a real hybrid cloud experience. So again, what is the Cloud Resolver? Cloud Resolver solves this major problem customers are having of simple cloud agnostic 
resolution of DNS across this vast complexity that's cloud between regions and, and cloud server providers and accounts and VPCs and DNS and we solve for that. It's easy to deploy meaning that it's deployable with the same tool chains that our customers use to deploy any cloud services. Make it um, fit into the way they want to work. It's cloud native. It can take advantage of all of the cloud services in order to create scale and create um, uh, survivability and create availability across the globe. It's cloud aware. In other words, it knows what cloud it's in, it knows what region it's in, it knows what account it's in, it knows how to get the information it needs to work based on the fact that it is aware of where it's actually deployed. The fact that it's cloud aware allows it to be cloud agnostic. It gives our customers the ability to resolve across and simply, uh, again, those different regions and accounts and tenants and VPCs without all of the massive complexity. That's the core of what it does, and it does it for the cloud builders.